Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Adriana Serna. I am the Communications Director for the Caribbean Hotel and Tourism Association. On behalf of CHTA and our strategic partner, OBM International, I would like to welcome you to our CAF Sustainability Webinar, Empowering Communities Through Sustainable Projects. Before we begin the presentation and you meet our our speaker, I'd like to go over a few housekeeping items for this webinar. This presentation is being recorded. You will be able to access the video of this of this presentation as well as the PowerPoint 48 hours after the webinar is over on our website, which is www.caribbeanhotelandtourism.com. Just click on the CHTA Learning Tools button on the home page. The presentation you're going to listen to today is, will last 20 minutes. After the presentation, there will be a Q&A session. You can submit your questions by typing them into the webinar's chat room. Any questions that we do not have time to address can be answered afterwards by the speaker. All of the speaker's contact information will be available on the last page of today's presentation. Now, without further ado, I would like to introduce you to Ms. Danae Hines, Director of Sustainability for OBI, OBM International, and she will introduce you to today's speaker. Danae? Good morning. Welcome, everyone. I'm glad that you're able to attend this webinar. We're excited about it, and happy Green Week, and a happy early Earth Day to you all who are attending. As you may have received the um, invite, successful enterprises build and sustain the communities that make their success possible. So today, we are going to learn about how you can create sustainability programs in your community, and how you can empower people to preserve and protect the environment. Um, in an industry that depends on sun, sand, sea, and sustainability, it's all very key. So our speaker today is Heidi Clark. She is the Director of Programs for the Sandals Foundation. And you will hear from her today about the many amazing things that the Sandals Foundation is doing. So without further ado, I'll hand it over to Heidi. Heidi, if you can start the presentation, we look forward to hearing from you. And I expect everyone to be engaged. I'm excited to hear what we have to learn today. Thank you so much, Danae. Good morning, everybody, and thank you so much for this opportunity to share a bit about how Sandals as a group and the Sandals Foundation are working to minimize our environmental and social impact through operations at our resorts, as well as by engaging our travelers and international partners. Um, just to get into it right away, um, you're all very aware, loving and working in the Caribbean, why we have guests that return time and time again. Um, great service at beautiful resorts is certainly part of it, and as a resort chain with a 33% return rate of guests, um, we understand that. But more than that, what people are really returning for in this region is a natural beauty and the warmth of the Caribbean people. So when we look at the big picture, both economic and social growth are important for this region, and both are dependent on the environment, but both negatively impact the environment. So the question really is, is environmental sustainability really possible with economic growth? And what does that really mean? Well, for us, it's looking at consumption of renewable resources, what we create in pollution, and non-renewable resource depletion, as well as, most importantly, the roles and responsibilities of people in their relationship with the environment. So as a company and a group across the region, what's in our hands? Well, 12,000 team members at present 22 properties in seven countries, 80% annual occupancy, and over 5,000 rooms. So this gives us the potential to use our brand to reach many local communities and many visitors to the Caribbean, as well as use our voice to lean on international partners. So for us, it's about adapting and responding. It's about understanding the environmental issues that face this region as well as the stressors that tourism and development add, and then identify, identifying steps as to how we can mitigate our response to that. On a whole, the Sandals Group is committed to providing quality vacations. It's about luxury, and that's what we want our guests to re realize time and time again. But it's also important that we minimize our environmental and social impacts associated with our operations. That's where it all starts. So areas of focus for us are freshwater and energy conservation, 
recycling and reuse programs for solid waste and wastewater, reducing and eliminating the use of hazardous substances, substances sorry, and the reduction of greenhouse gas, gas emissions. For us, it really starts at the beginning. So when we're looking at new hotels, we're looking at the building and engineering, and we're looking at utilizing smart room technology. So technology where rooms, doors, balcony doors are linked to the electronics, the appliances, the AC units in the room, ensuring that through construction, we're looking at setback, and we're not looking at, at constructing buildings directly on the beach. We're looking at installing low flow faucets and toilets, as well as wastewater treatment plants, especially when it comes to and of course, looking at phasing out CFCs and utilizing alternative energy resources. Presently, we use them for water heating, but we're now in the process of, of looking at partnerships to develop other programs, solar, wind, on our properties to utilize that as well. But for us, it's also about constant manage management and consistent monitoring and measurement of energy and water consumption, as well as looking at water quality to assess what it, our runoff and the impact it's having on the ocean and the waterways around us. One of our greatest assets, we feel, is our EHS team, our environment, health, and safety team at every resort. Not only are they responsible for managing our in-house systems, but what we look at them and lean on them for is educating our team members and our guests on how they can play their part. So our team members are really the eyes and ears of the community. And we want them to take positive practices that we're able to teach them on property back into their communities. And we also feel that we have to lead by example when it comes to our guests. Many of them come to the Caribbean and they, you know, they haven't realized the, the impact they're making on this region. So we want to let them know how they can play their part. My job, of course, is with the Sandals Foundation. As a director of programs, we look at avenues to impact communities and the region beyond the hotel doors. So for 30 plus years, our company has been committed to investing in neighboring communities. Seven years ago, we took that commitment to a new level by launching the Sounds Foundation. It's a registered char charity operating in all the islands where we do business. And over the seven year period, we've been able to implement projects and programs at a value of US $21 million. How have we been able to do this? Well. When we look at today's consumer, we see a much more mindful consumer. These mindful consumers are the ones looking for vacations that make a difference. They want to understand how their tourism dollars are impacting local communities. When we look at this consumer, what does this consumer look like? Well, the majority of them are under the age of 40, and they prioritize the environment. And what's very interesting, is they're willing to pay more for products and services that are socially responsible. So what does that mean for us? Well, basically, it's an opportunity to engage these mindful travelers. And through our resorts and the Sounds Foundation, our guests can get involved in a myriad of projects in the areas of community, environment, and education. Today, our focus, of course, is on the environment and on greening your travel and on how being a responsible destination really ties core values of our company to environmental sustainability. So it's about making our visitors aware that this region, like so many others, has both social and environmental issues, and it's not about us turning a blind eye to them. So for us, it's about providing an opportunity for guests to get involved, whether it's through volunteering of their time, making certain purchases, on property at the resort shops or through spa products that give back to the environmental projects that we're doing, or just making them aware of what we're doing so they can make direct donations. Sounds oh, Foundation has undertaken work in several areas on the environmental umbrella, um, marine conservation being one of the biggest ones, protection of endangered species, environmental education being a huge one and very important because it underlies it all and of course deforestation. For our marine sanctuaries, we've developed partnerships, both governmental and with nonprofits, to manage and fund two of the 14 declared marine sanctuaries in Jamaica. 
These sanctuaries now employ local fishermen as wardens and involve the community as local stakeholders. Through these sanctuaries, we have been able to engage our guests and local fishermen in the establishment of two coral nurseries. This, of course, is to promote the building of healthy reefs. Guests, by the end of this year, will be involved directly in paying a small fee to transplant um, live corals onto our existing reefs. And what does this do in turn? Well, it builds healthy reefs to increase the options for divers to desire to come to the Caribbean to dive. Um, we've also recently started this through our lionfish hunts, uh, where we're offering divers the opportunity to get certified in hunting for these invasive species. And they pay us a fee for this. They get involved um, at both the cooking level, at the diving level, at the hunting level. And then these funds, in turn, go out and fund workshops for community members, other hotels, water sports teams, and the members of protected regions so that they, too, can understand what they can do to play their part in this area. You know, guests walk away with a dive tag, as you're seeing here on the screen. They feel good. It says they've helped to make a difference in diving in the Caribbean. So it's not just about getting them involved, but they're actually paying to be involved, and their funding is going on to do things in the region. What we're really proud about is that the sanctuaries are already showing great success. With our last assessment, and this was done by the National Environmental Agency here in Jamaica, our Basketball Sanctuary has shown an increase of 544% in the biomass of herbivores and 250% in the increase of um, overall fish biomass. I think the greatest benefit over the past two years with the fish sanctuaries is that we're now seeing local fishermen really buying into environmental conservation and seeing why it is making a difference. And they've actually said to us, how can we help you to expand these sanctuaries? So, that's one way the, the marine whole sector is, you know, benefiting, and I think that it's a it's an easy fix with what we have available to us. Um, when we look at endangered species in this region, 300 different plants and animals in the Caribbean are on the endangered species list, and there are so many organizations on the ground trying to make a difference, and they're doing a good job, but they all have major issues in funding funding research and funding wardening and patrol of these regions. So this is when organizations like ourselves come in, when the strength of our international partners, our voice internationally as a, as a group, and tourism dollars, we partner with these local organizations to make their work possible. We've done this through a couple of avenues recently, um, our turtle tour. So this is a seasonal turtle tour. It's done in Antigua and Jamaica. It allows guests to witness and get out there and see the rem um, remarkable beauty of nature. But it in turn provides funding for wardens and education um, in the community about the endangered species. This year, I'm even pleased to say, if you see that bottom picture, that we have been able to raise enough money through the tours. Uh, so one of our partner turtle programs here on the ground in Jamaica has actually been able to have the first turtle incubator, which deals with damaged nests and eggs. And we've seen an increase in hatchlings through these partnerships um, of up to 83% in the past year, which is pretty exciting. We've also looked at a similar program um, with in Grenada through the Mount Hartman Visitor Center. So not about just handing out funds, but about creating a space where visitors can get involved with bird watching, pay a fee. We've done new relief maps, a lookout tower, done their trails. This is one of the most endangered um, birds in the Caribbean. And of course now guests are getting involved to help with the conservation of that as well. Under environment, we feel that one of the most critical components of sustainability is really about education, educating young people, educating community members, and encouraging environmental consciousness, commitment, and most importantly, a change in behavior. In practical ways, we have invested in hands-on experiences through field trips. Um, we've recently completed Ride to Save the Wetlands, 
We saw 3,000 children going out to the wetlands in the Bahamas. We have now begun our floating classrooms in Antigua. So this will have a similar um, impact on the public schools and private schools there. We're doing both. Um, we do year-long programs. We're in the middle of one with Guy Harvey, which has a specific focus on marine conservation. And that's in seven islands working with 1,400 children. And through funding of environmental summer camps. So they cover every topic from bird sleuthing to wetland ecosystems. We've been able to provide over 300 children who would otherwise not be able to attend these camps with the funding to go to them. And at the end of the day, all trying to just spread the education and the value. You know, in a, in a day when we look at children who are so gripped by technology, few of them get outside and make that connection. So this is really about getting that connection and that education out there. And of course, one of the keys for us is looking at funding for um, teachers and training teachers in the area of environmental science with the knowledge that they're really the purveyors of education for the next generation. We've just recent, recently done 240 teachers. If we think of 240 teachers impacting 20 students a year, you know, that can expand the reach to 7,200 students. So it's really just about getting it out there and spreading that. In the area of reforestation, once again, it comes back to education. Promoting understanding of trees in our partner schools and communities through, par through once again, partnerships. So in partnerships both internationally and locally with groups such as Trees at Feed that focus in schools on planting what you eat, grow what you eat. And then, of course, we have another group that we work with, REAP, which is about developing environmental clubs with students at schools that we work with. On property, guests are also encouraged to buy a tree or a mangrove seedling and join us to plant, get out there and volunteer and plant. And then these funds that they're contributing not only pay for the tree, but they pay for the maintenance of these trees as well as education in the schools. When we look beyond the economy, we look at how tourism can positively impact the natural environment. So we know there are many negatives, but we look at government government officials, we look at policymakers, we look at members. When we raise the awareness at all levels to the value of the environment, so much more can be achieved. And then it's about using our position with a voice and having international visitors come to us to raise funding and for protection, restoration, and of course, conservation. We look at travelers. They're becoming more and more conscious. They want to make a difference. It puts us in a position where we have so much more potential in this region to utilize this. But it is all about providing the right opportunities and having your eyes and ears on the ground, making opportunities that are beneficial to both the community and to the visitor. And when they walk away with that experience, it really just is a win-win situation. And for us, it has been. And we have seen great growth from 2009 to date. We have looked of at environmental donations in this region of an increase of 605%. I think it's huge. It really speaks volumes to the fact that People want to get involved and they want to see how they can make a difference in this arena. We do many, many other projects um, throughout the environmental region. I didn't want to touch on everything. I thought that I would just touch on um, the, the most important to us and then we can you know, have questions and answers and go from there. So I thank you for the opportunity and um, we can go ahead. Okay, wonderful. Can everyone, can you hear me? Everything okay? Alrighty. Can you hear me, Heidi? Yes, I can still hear you. Okay, wonderful. Okay. Alrighty. Well, I'm going to start out with a few questions regarding because a lot of our some of our members are smaller hotels, and I know there's a question of how to build these programs in a way that are impactful to the community but that are economically viable to the hotel. Uh, what would be your recommendation to smaller? Hotels. Okay, so 
I just, I just want to start by saying one of the most important things is that people are coming on vacation to the Caribbean, so it's never a hard sell, but I think it's about making people aware. So there are very small little things that can be done. You know, we have a, a small turtle on property. It's a little stuffed turtle. It's our number one selling item in our gift shops. The sale of that turtle contributes back to um, our marine projects. So I think that bringing awareness to the guests is one thing, so finding a partnership in the community. And it's not about, it's not always about you going out and reinventing and trying to take on new projects, but I think it's about partnerships with existing environmental organizations that are on the ground and seeing how they can bring awareness to their guests about that program and what are small things we could do on property. Is it to sell a keychain or to sell a turtle or, you know, just to see what are volunteer opportunities with local environmental groups that guests can be guided to. So I think that would be a first step and it's a very easy way and it helps really to spread awareness. So it's, le it's leveraging programs in the community that are already in existence and basically just partnering with them. That's the best way to start. Correct. And then you okay. and bringing awareness to those programs through the properties and through the and through guests and also the team members. You know, your your staff, it's very important that you bring them on board. Mm -hmm. That leads to the next question. Um, how, when it comes to empowering employees, how do you, what's the best way to identify who would be the best people to, to carry on that role of being the environmental guardians? Or how do you, what is the best way you have found to find those, those people within your, that are already in your, in your organization that would be ideal to carry that banner, so to speak? For us, we do a, a lot of um, educational courses on property through our EHS and also through myself this, at the Silence Foundation. And it's really just one exposure for starters to let them know what's out there and available. And it's surprising that you will see the employees that want to come out and volunteer. But I think it's exposure. One, you may want to give your team members an a, a opportunity to go out and do an environmental project with you. And then seeing interest and they really become the ambassadors. Um, we also have little pins that we give our employees that they're an environmental ambassador or they may be for community or education. Um, we also allow our employees to bring suggestions to us uh, about environmental projects, community projects or education projects. So they are very much involved in the process. So I think that if you throw all of those avenues out there, you'll see the people on your team that have the most interest and they really become the ambassadors. Uh, do you feel that there's, what would you consider to be the initial investment in putting together a program of this sort financially? You know, you know, there's all different things. It just depends. Um, you know, our marine sector costs to run a marine sanctuary is approximately fifty to sixty thousand U.S. dollars a year. But that employs local fishermen, and there's a lot of cost in that. So it just depends. I mean, you can leverage and join a partnership with a turtle organization, and maybe be one of the partners that gives five or ten thousand dollars. I mean, they're all different. Going out to a school, a school program. The one that we're presently doing, I think it's about $24,000, um, and that just includes transportation and getting volunteers together and having the right um, material to go out with. So all the programs differ. It just depends on what you want to get involved with, and I think that the key would be to look at organizations that are on the ground and really making things happen, and then ask them to send proposals to you and, and see what they're doing and what they're doing well and you know, look at their budget. How impactful do you think the uh, eco the, the eco brand or um, the green label, so to speak, is when truly when 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 guests decide to choose a hotel uh, nowadays when going to the Caribbean, and does it vary between the American market, the European market? I think it gets the European market. I mean, I will tell you that our appeal has been um, very North American when it comes to environmental issues. We are trying to reach out more and more to our European visitors. Um, once they're aware, 
they are very interested. But I think that because consumers are becoming so conscientious, travelers are too. And I seriously think that they would look, and as I said before, they're willing to actually pay more for a product that is greener. I mean, environment is, has been the main focus under all of the areas that we've looked at with our guests and with the growth that we've seen in this area. You know, our turtle tour is one of the highest demands. People are very interested. So I think that it makes, it makes a big difference nowadays. And I also think it's a great opportunity for us locally to, to, to utilize that interest. There's also a big connection, I, I feel, between ecological programs and also the idea of experiential tourism. Uh, would you care to elaborate on, on, on that connection? Very much. I, um, we've seen it firsthand. You know, we are all-inclusive resort, but we are very much about encouraging our guests to get out there and experience the island because that's what, you know, we want to, we want to sell Jamaica, we want to sell Antigua, we want to sell Bahamas and all the other islands that we work in. And we have seen guests go to a school because we do a weekly school trip as well um, for our reading program that have gone out to the school, made contact with the local people outside of the resort, and really make a connection that goes beyond that reading trip or it goes beyond that turtle tour. And they fall in love with the island just a little bit more and they want to do a little more and they realize, you know, what challenges face this region. So we definitely think that experiencing it firsthand is huge. Um, we have our community routes through Island Roots, our tour company, where people can either go to a school, they can join an environmental club, they can go on a turtle tour. And then we constantly have people now looking for groups that want to come out and do volunteering in the Caribbean. And we find projects for them and make it happen. And that connection goes back internationally. They speak about it, and it brings more funding in where it's needed. Mm, that's great. Uh, the other question, and this is, I think, my final question, unless anyone, you can raise your hand virtually uh, if you have a question, and we'll try to see if we can unmute you and you can ask the question yourself. But my final question here is, when it comes to when you're training your employees and you're giving them all of this access to new information, they take it home, they take it to their families and you hope that there's kind of a ripple effect. Do you have a story of something that, like that that has happened within one of the Sandals resorts? Oh, we have many stories. Um, we have a, a team member project that comes up at the end of every, well it's going to be launched now April, I said the end of April, so uh, where team members actually bring forward their projects and we have just seen where they've gone out and they've said, you know, I've learned about recycling on property and I want to see if we could do a pilot project within my community and see if people would actually do this, if they'd actually separate their garbage. Um, and we've seen them, you know, with the fact that they're bringing forward projects that are, that are environmentally um, conscious projects because they're seeing what's happening in their community and what we're teaching. It, it speaks volumes. It also speaks volumes to the schools that we're working with and the fact that they are now some of the cleanest schools in the Caribbean because the kids are, are making the connection. It's our team members that are actually going out there um, as volunteers to teach this to them. So I think all around the education is, is really paying off and our team members having that knowledge and taking it into their communities, you know, we're just getting the word out further and further. That's wonderful. Thank you so much, Heidi. I just wanted to also say that I'm very happy this week we started out our, because as everyone knows, Friday is Earth Day, and this week has been CHTA Green Week, so all of our member hotels have been uh, letting everyone know on social media all of the wonderful environmental efforts that they do in their own properties, and it's a great source of inspiration for everyone. So if you haven't participated, in week's photo challenge, please do so on any platform, Facebook, Twitter, um, Instagram, whatever platform you would like, and share with us all of the great things that you're doing to make to sustain the environment in your own island. 
And thank you so. And if those of you that haven't done so yet, please participate. We're very curious to see all the wonderful things you've done. Heidi, thank you so much for, yeah, for your time. Talking. Yeah, can I it's just say one thing before? One, of the, I mean, when I think of one of the greatest things that we can all do for each other, it's really about um, sharing best practices in this area. Um, there are programs that have worked all around the world, and I try my best to keep on top of those. But it's also about sharing our programs. So if there's anybody that's interested in knowing a marine program or wants access to the lesson plans for that, so that they can take it and utilize it in their schools instead of reinventing the wheel, we're very willing to share anything so that we are, you know, working together for the Caribbean. So please, you know, keep the ideas coming, but also feel free to reach out to us if you see something on our website that you want to learn more about or if you want the material from it. We're more than happy to share that. That's fantastic. I, I will be happy to we'll be happy to take that and make it available on our website as well, or just email that out to folks that participated in this webinar. If you're, if you're interested, we can send that out. That would be fantastic. Thank you. Wonderful. Well, thank you very much for All your time. Right. Thank you so much, Heidi. Everyone, have a great, wonderful day. We'll see your pictures of all of the great things you're doing on on social media, and have a, have a great day. We'll.